Hey guys, what's up? Love ya, hope you're doing well. And wanted to talk about Sam Hyde's, probably his one, at least up there with some of his best advice, is get a skill. Uh, fix the camera here. And I wanted to add a bit to that, and I think Sam would agree with me. I'd be curious to hear what he, he has to say. <clears throat> I think along with that is orient your life. So there's an interesting channel on YouTube called Nomad Capitalist and this guy, the guy who runs the channel, he always says, go where you're wanted or go where you're, excuse me, go where you're treated best. And there's a couple issues with that in that you don't, you know, you're not going to have time to check out every place in the world. And you can't always get where you want to go. But I think it's largely true in that at least you should try to go wherever you can. Try to go to a place that you're treated better or the best that you know of. And that can be in a lot of different facets. It can be in, you know, just personal interaction. People treating you decently just with, uh, you know, niceties and kindness, just not being rude, passive aggressive, uh, smart aleck, uh, trying to you know, screw you over, whatever. And, you know, that kind of expands to, yeah, people outright stealing from you, people, um, uh, you know, assaulting you, trying to murder you, etc. And... Also, the biggest thing that kind of goes hand in hand with Sam Hyde's get a skill is where your skill is going to be very effective or very lucrative to you. So if you're, you know, I don't, I'm not sure, but let's just say if you're a plumber or something, if you can somehow look up or find an approximation of how concentrated, how many plumbers there are in your area, maybe there's somebody... There, there might be something within a 50 mile radius, some city or, you know, some region of a city where there's very few plumbers or where you're just going to be able to sort of dominate the area and get much more money. It might be worth relocating or it could be even another place in the country or an entirely different country. And this works for a lot of different things. The... Sort of an exception is if you're trying to do something that's on a mass scale. So, for example, Sam Hyde doing this sort of um, alternative comedy type of thing. But within that, I'm sure he could say, you know, you try to um, I don't know, focus. I don't I actually don't know what he say. I, sh I shouldn't say that. But if you are making some sort of um, entertainment thing, you might want to look where people are getting that sort of entertainment. So maybe more so on YouTube than I would suspect than people on something like Snapchat. Um, I'm sure he has fans on there and that people that use that. But anyway, you get what I mean. Trying to figure it out. I don't. I don't have all the answers either. I'm just trying to give some examples. And sometimes, you know, changing exactly what you do can can make a difference. Um, let's say you're a lawyer. Maybe it's focusing on a specific niche that not a lot of lawyers know about. I'm sure there's a bunch of lawyers watching this. <laughs> But, yeah, I, I think there's so much information now on the internet and it's fairly easy to travel now that it's not out of the question. It, it, I realize some people, they have a family, they have, um, especially if they have their own family, you know, like children and wife and things, it's hard to move. Um, or, but... Otherwise, if they just are connected to their extended family a lot, it might be hard to move. But there's usually something, some sort of 
decisions, some choices you can make to better your position in life, whatever that may be. You know, some of it's gonna be looking down the road, trying to set up safe investments so that you're you're not gonna have to be working um, uh, uh, on a roof when you're 70 years old or something. I think people should be continue doing stuff through their life, but knowing that you're not going to be in a position where you're, you know, your body's breaking down and you have to do some hard work would be really nice um, um, when you're, whatever, 80 or something. So, setting, I guess that's kind of two things, is setting yourself up for the future and making decisions for, to, to better your life that go hand in hand with, um, you know, developing a skill. And that's kind of a skill in itself too of de deciphering um, what's the good and bad road to take. And sometimes you're gonna make, you know, not great decisions, but hopefully you learn from that. Um, another thing to kind of add on to the Gita skill is, um, better yourself in, in every realm possible. And, well, maybe not every realm possible. There's some stuff that's not, it's great to know everything, but some stuff that might not be worth your time. But better yourself in terms of like, it, just making tiny steps towards something continually is, is very beneficial in the long run. <clears throat> and you can probably look back at in 10 years and kind of be shocked at where you are. That's, that's how I was with eating health food and being healthy. I always worked out a lot, that wasn't a problem for me. But I, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, I'll eat whatever, I, I don't care how bad it is for me, it, do, it doesn't matter. And I slowly got once I turned 18, pretty much, I realized I had low energy. I always kind of had lower energy, but it seemed to hit me harder then. And so I just slowly, like one thing at a time, took out. I tried to like cut down on sugar. I tried to eat less meat. I tried to not eat like high fructose things. I tried to eat not eat, like I did one thing at a time. I didn't go, okay, I'm not gonna do any of these things anymore. I'm only gonna eat uh, salad, some vegetables, and fruit. I didn't do it like that. Though that is most of what I consume now, and I think it is generally the way to go, you know, that's just my opinion. But, um, I didn't just jump into that. I, I did one thing at a time. And even something, I think the biggest, most beneficial thing for your health, intermittent fasting, was one of those things that said, oh yeah, that's great, I'm not, I'm never gonna do that. But I slowly, it even, even just thinking about this stuff, just learning about this stuff and gets, gets you moving in that direction. It's interesting, I heard that they stopped doing um, Scared Straight, which was a program where they had kids go to prisons and see how bad it was and freak them out and stuff so that they wouldn't do, commit crimes to stay out of jail. And it actually backfired and that kids sort of got used to that um, environment and so they weren't afraid of it anymore. And so they were more likely to commit truck crime. In the same way, just familiarizing yourself with, you know, investments, um, health, um, getting your mind clear, getting off old fears and psychological things that are kind of getting in your way um, and having peace in your life is a great thing and finding out, you know, who's worth keeping in your life, who's worth maybe politely spending less time with at the very least. I guess it kind of all goes in line with uh, self-help type of thing. But
I think the reason I wanted to make this was because I myself, I feel like I really want to correct people and get people on the right track and see, have people see my way, especially in terms of like economics and political things and kind of point out things that to me seem to be very clear and obvious that people don't want to talk about or uh, for um, because they want to be politically correct or they were their their mind has been programmed to think a certain way um, they they just have a emotional reaction to thing and don't think things logically anyway kind of Sam himself said that he he gives the advice of get get a skill and kind of hammers that over and over because how how futile that is and how you know you might change some people's mind but in the long run you're much better just positioning yourself as best you can and you'll save yourself a lot of headache and a lot of time that you would have used on trying to convince people to do something else and one thing I found too is that we tend to look at, um, you know, politics in turn, uh, as like affecting us a lot and having countrywide um, politics. However, people lean <clears throat> being very much um, detrimental to us, but. You know, there are varying laws, especially within America, some separation of power, although that's going away, there's separation of power in terms of just city or town and then municipality, um, county, um, state, and then federal. And within the United States, you can find, I mean, a place like Wyoming, I think is a good example of laws that are mostly quite good and, and the government's mostly uh, run well. So you're you're in a great position if you're an American to kind of change. If you're living in somewhere like, you know, certain areas of, let's say, Baltimore or Chicago or uh, pretty much anywhere in Detroit that I've seen, you can go somewhere else, and that's something that it's not uh, not a lot of people have that luxury they, they and it takes a long time for them to get to a country where they can thrive better and be safer and um, have better you know job opportunities and things like that. but you can do that within your own country if you're in a bad place um you know on the north side of Milwaukee which was close to where I grew up, get out of there, leave. You know, a lot of people <clears throat> are really just, they, they don't even, it's not even a thought. <clears throat> Excuse me. I lived in Brazil for a while and I uh, lived in a small rural town and I saw that people who were making minimum wage in that rural town, just like beggars at the grocery store, we're living a far better life than the people who were in the favelas in Rio. And it, it wasn't even that far to get outside of Rio. The people who live there, I mean, uh, it, th there's tons of little towns too. <clears throat> they could have gotten a bus ticket or just, you know, taken a few days and walked outside the city and and gotten a job or found some connection, found a job on, online if they have access, somehow get out of the city, you know, save up for, save up money for um, a month, a few months, and, and, and use that to make your, your trip out. And, you know, the people who are living outside in this like small town, low wage job, they were in a pretty safe area they had enough money to to pay the rent, pay food, and do a few extra things. Not very much, you know, very, very poor, but it was far better than living in a favela where it's like just 
just uh, dirty. There's a ton of drugs, ton of crime. And yeah, like I said, I know it's hard for some people to leave. Some people just really don't ever want to leave where they grew up. But I think if you don't even give it a shot, you don't know how much better your life can be. And some people might, I constantly get accused of, uh, I think because of the way I look, people think I had like a trust fund or that my parents paid for everything. They're like, oh, you're ignorant. You don't know how difficult it is. Uh, they didn't really give me anything. I, especially when I turned 18, no. I, I even, I, I had to pay to stay at my parents' place. They, um, I didn't get car paid for, I didn't get school paid for, I didn't get clothing paid for, um, nothing, food, the, they, they cut me loose. So, and, and it's not like they gave me a chunk of money and said, here you go, either. I was just, I was pretty much nothing, and now I live in uh, a, a small town, and my life is decent. Um, and that's the other thing, is like, the prices are so much lower in rural areas. I guess I'm just going into sort of my own opinion now about um, kind of rural versus city living you know some that's 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 for some people that's fine <clears throat> and that's not what I meant to make this video about but I'm saying basically the core of what this video I'm saying is like forget the outside world you know people are gonna think what they want they're gonna think they're gonna do what they want and but but, but you go Ideally, you, you make it as best you can for yourself. So if you do live in a crazy area, you know, get, get every protection you can on your home. Get security cameras. Get, like, super strong doors, super great locks. Have, um, I don't know, there's a lot of security things. I, I don't know that much about... Um, Make it so that you going into your house is very quick and easy. You're not going to get stopped. You're not going to get mugged. Don't go out in dangerous areas. You know, like do these things to just keep your person safe and do your job as best you can and all these things. Make it as simple, as efficient, as safe for yourself. Keep thinking about where to make little changes to make things better for you. <clears throat> And, um, when you see an opportunity to take it, for anybody else who's like, no, nah, I'm not about that. I'm not going to try to, you know, make it in, uh, skid row, <laughs> you know, if you happen to live around there, then I think that is certainly the uh, the way to go. The thing is that sometimes you'll go to an area. There are certain areas where people profess or they kind of say they want a certain thing, but then they don't really lean that way. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, a place like Palo Alto or like these ultra-rich areas where they kind of say that they are, are for these certain things, but certain policies, but they don't really um, <clears throat> follow them. There's a great video done. I, forget, I forgot his name, but the title is uh, Liberal Hypoc Hypocrisy is, I don't know, just Destroying America or something like that, where he goes on and says that, you know, the <clears throat> excuse me, in cities that are completely controlled by liberals or areas that are con completely controlled by, li by liberals, left-wing people, if you're outside of America, that's how we call them liberals, but left-wing people, 
um, they, whenever something comes up like, oh, let's make affordable housing, they're like, no, no, we're not going to allow that. And any sort of program that would help, you know, poor people or people who, uh, homeless people or whatever, it, they basically vote against it. So kind of another thing to keep in mind is when, when you're thinking of moving someplace, um, how, what the actual, what's going on like right now. It's good to look for the future and it's good to, you know, to hear people, but it kind of goes back to that saying, actions are louder than words. <clears throat> and so there's some, um, some places in the world that, uh, again, I, I get the best example I can think of, Palo Alto, where, you know, it's, it seems like they're, it's going to be really difficult to, um, to kind of win people over, but they're already on your side, right? Now that's, I suppose, if you're like a, a very wealthy person, um, but for everybody else, there's examples too. I, <clears throat> I'm thinking in particular about, I, I study a lot about Norway and I think about Norway and I see problems kind of very slightly brewing in the country. And I want to go and like tell people and say things and, uh, kind of warn them and because I see the patterns have already unfolded in certain parts of America. But if you're around people who will make the right decision most of the time, eventually, then you're in a good spot. You never know how things will play out, but I guess what I'm thinking in terms of specifically is immigration. And I see them kind of uh, letting some people in that seems questionable to do so. And it's, I think they're um, maybe not doing as good of a job as they could do, even though they are doing quite well. Um, they have had a long history of doing things well. So sometimes kind of overlooking the exceptions and taking a general view on a, a group of people and is the way to figure out if it's going to be a good place to live and a good place to thrive and things like that. Um, You know, because sometimes people will say things like, oh, America, there's, um, it's so dangerous you can get shot and the murder rate's higher than, um, you know, certain places in Europe and things. But that's a, that's if you look at the totality, whereas those dangerous areas are mostly very concentrated. And so you can go to areas in America where people are generally fairly safe and uh, not crazy and they keep the economy pretty good and things like this. Jeez, <clears throat> um, I'm kind of getting off track here because I, I, sort of, I sort of melded two different points I was making in that... <clears throat> Well, I'll leave it. I'll leave it there because uh, I don't want to get off track too much. But yeah, thanks for watching. Love ya. Uh, if you would comment and like and subscribe, that'd be cool. If not, that's fine. Take care. Have a good one.